So a Christian friend of mine in the Lord asked me the other day, is it okay for a Christian to take part or do yoga? So I figured that would be our next one for the wet cloth about yoga. Again, this is a many pages, so this may be two, maybe three items that we have to do. I don't want to call them series, but outlines. So yoga is universal. The classes of yoga are offered worldwide, many countries. They're on university billboard bulletin boards, in health food stores, the advertisements, in apartment buildings, and some YMCA PE. They're advertised, you can find them anywhere. They got their own places, they got places they rent. Almost like a church. Find a church in their own places or places they rent. In yoga, the method of uh, by Alan Alain Daniel, and forgive me for some of these names, a French scholar on yoga, writes that the real important import of yoga is a process of control of the gross body, which aims at freeing the subtle body. How the body experience and all that mess. The subtle body is a really complex and consisting of 72,000 invisible psychic channels called Nadi. And again, these names I may be a little off or far off. The subtle body and the physical body are connected at several, uh, excuse me, at seven primary points or chakra, chakra, ranging from the top of the head to the base of the spine. To your spinal cord. The chakras are thought to be the regulator of the consciousness of the individual. Employing the Employing the spine through various yoga positions or postures is believed to increase the energy flow from the refined body changing the conscious of the in individual. So if you reach these different points of your body, you can relieve yourself, you can give yourself power and energy. And in a mind-over-body relationship, mantra yoga is... If I say yoga, forgive me sometimes. Yoga is also seeked out to adjust consciousness of the individual by repetition of mantras, which Guru Guru Dev, Dev, the Guru of Marshal Hari Mahesh Yoga, well thought out the famous names of the gods. So already we're going into small GODS. We're dealing with the body. Dealing with exercising. That's universal. By chance, you know, the Catholic means universal. <coughs> Yoga has become a debate for religions and Christians all around the world. Yoga's birthplace is India. Not Jerusalem. Not in the realms of the Bible. Not in the realms of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not in the realms of the Twelve Apostles. Not in the realms of Jesus Christ. So is it right for Christians to practice yoga? And by the time we get done with this study, if you don't turn off, if you listen all the way through, you're going to find no. Most Christians stretch or have stretches. We'll begin there. Some Christians even meditate on God's word or his holiness while stretching. I study the Bible daily, and I may get to, oh, man, my back, oh, just, oh, whew. Uh, but we're going to go into more of a realm than, you know, just that, that muscle is sore, getting up and giving your eggs, legs a little exercise, you know, stretching. We're going to be beyond that. Haf, H-A-F, Hindu American Foundation, explains that this practice which is most common in the United States, is not truly yoga. This stretching. It is an asana. Asana? I say a sin uh. 
a more newly written but still ancient Hebrew text explain yoga as consisting of six parts or limbs. One of which is called Asa, Asa, A-S-A-N-A, which refers to the poses involved with yoga. So you're studying, reading your Bible, relating to God, you're stretching yourself, you are doing an asana. You are doing yoga, a form of yoga. Yeah, like I said, you know, I my muscles get tired sitting. I got to get up and get a little exercise. But I'm not doing an asana. The hop, what we talked about, uh, the Hindu American Foundation, goes on to sustain that the status of an asana because it is the most common avenue for Western people to take further steps and accept Eastern religion. But they say, Without insight, wisdom, and proper guidance from a guru, modern-day yoga is asana, without understanding, faith, or intention, and therefore merely remains the level of physical exercise. But it is also in the realm, they already told us, of the Hindu texts. So they're already trying to twist and make it, oh, it's okay, it's just an exercise. No, you said over here, more newly written but still ancient Hebrew texts of six parts or limbs. A collie is a dog, a rot roller is a dog, a chihuahua is a dog. Asana is, according to them, it is yoga. Just not far fetched yoga, but it's yoga. Especially in a culture that is extremely busy, noisy, and fast-paced, slowing down to practice yoga, asana, can offer a time of rebuilding, reflection, that is often welcome for many overstressed and burdened people. How about just sit down, relax, take a little nap, go for a little walk, take a vacation. Now look at this. They went to Psalms 46.10. To say, be still and know that I am God. Yoga can deliver the time, space, and structure for Christians to be still and focus our attention on, the, on God's presence with us all. Let's look at Psalms 46.10, shall we? Now, I'm not going to open up my Bible. You have the luxury of, you can hit pause, slow me down, back me up, fast forward me. So... I allow you to do that with these videos for the sake of time. So Psalms 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. Colon. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Well, they just took a verse out and put it on the sample and said, Oh, how pretty. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord, but are you going to put your gods away? Oh, well, no. Psalms 46, 6 to 11. Let's look at the context. The heathen rage. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth, earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come behold the works of the Lord. With desolations he has made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. This is the millennium. He breaketh the bow, he cutteth the spear in the sunder, he burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. This is not the God of, of yoga. This ain't the God of Hindu. This is God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is the God of the King James Bible. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. <coughs> The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. So when you go to Psalms 46.10, it's written to Jewish people, not Indians. Or Hindi. Or Buddhists. It is written against Gentiles who have become the enemies of the Jewish people. To be cursed because they cursed the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The rest in God's peace. 
Jesus Christ, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, be not the God of Eastern religions, small g-o-d-s. Exodus 20, verse 3, Thou shalt have no other gods before me, and the Hindi, the Hindus, have many, 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 many gods. Exodus 23, 13, And in all things that I have said unto you, be circumspect, and make no mention the name of other gods, neither let it be heard out of thy mouth. And when we go into study, if you're getting to listen to all the study, and not to turn it off because you got angry and offended, you will see that some of the names of these events that are in this yoga are names of their gods. Where God says, don't even mention your name. So, can I do yoga? Exodus 23, 13 says, don't even mention your name. And that poise, that move, that bend over may be the name of a God. That's not God. Jeremiah 25, 6, and go not after other gods to serve them and to worship them and provoke me, that's God, not to anger with your works of your hands, you know, moving your hands all around, and gods. There are statues in this yoga practice. And I will do you no hurt. <laughs> I like Jeremiah 25, verse 6 in yoga. Oh, I'm going to do yoga. I'm going to get my body and strength. I'm going to go get my inner personality. I'm going to get my mind. I'm going to get me all good. And God says, if you do that, I'll do you hurt. I'll do exactly opposite of what you're going to do to make you good in yoga. People want to say yoga. So what does yoga mean to Hindus, Christians in the United States, and Christians in India? The practice of yoga is taught in the ancient Indian texts. Three major religions, Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism, were those writings. From a Hindu standpoint, yoga is an important part of reaching the ultimate goal, moksha, which is harmony with a small g-o-d and freedom from the sequence of birth and death. Life. <laughs> we're born to die. You know, what, you know what the Bible says about our life to go forward? We're to be born again. We're to put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ and give ourselves wholly to God. We'll come across that again. The Hindu American Foundation, HAF, explains, using ancient Hindu texts, the yoga consists of four types. Translated to devotion. That's what Christians that have devotion. Knowledge. A Christians that have knowledge. Action. Were to be verbs or consecration. Consecration. Think it. These types of yoga acts as paths to the goal, moksha. Because concent concentration or being present allows us, the Hindus, to focus inwards in our divine self, we can focus on making every thought, word, and action selfless and thus. Worthy offerings to the divine, their gods, to reside in us all. So if we do good, not of works, least any man both. If we do good things, we get into the thoughts, we get into the right. We can be one with our God. I can be one with our God. Faith and belief upon Jesus Christ as my Lord, God, and Savior. But therein lies what I see as a fundamental disconnect with the teachings of yoga and Christianity. Sheetal Shaw, Senior Director at HAF, said, it been, said to BeliefNet.com article, is asinine, excuse, asinine religious. That was, did not mean that. No, could be mean. So even the people involved with Hindu are saying there's a difference between Hindu and there's a difference between Christian. It's too bad Christians can't see that. Very sorry. Shaw, who I just mentioned above, notices that the fundamental disconnect between Christianity and Easter religions, so there is a difference, are by them, their own teaching. When the complete physical and spiritual practices of yoga are followed, the Bible teaches God's people to meditate, but to meditate on God's word, Joshua 1.8. 8. 
This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest serve to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy ways prosperous, then thou shalt have good success. So you see, we have taken what the Bible says, meditate on the word of God. We've done that, and we've gone a step Christians into yoga. We meditate on the word of God and our bodies. In Colossians 3, 2, it says, Set your afflictions on things above and not things on the earth, your body. We're not to be studying the Bible and traveling outer space or wherever you go. You kind of lose your study. Did you read your Bible? Yeah, you read your, What did you learn? I don't know. I was out in Jupiter somewhere. <laughs> I was out collecting my eons, my peons, or whatever they were. That's not studying. What did God say? Oh, I'm one with myself. <laughs> That's not what God said. Definitely, you did not read the Word of God. And the Bible explains God's people to offer their complete selves in worship. But the offering should be only to God, not themselves. Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It's to God and not self. It's to God, not God's. The Bible also imparts that the want of focus and renewal of the human mind, but it's to be renewed to know God better personally. Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but that ye be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that is prove what is that good, and acceptable and perfect the will of God so I am to take yoga and I am to look at yoga what it is what the history is what involves what all the direct the, the, the structure of yoga is and I'm going to say is it appropriate to God that I even think about doing this does it approve by the Word of God and I've already given you multiple scriptures. It does not. And I'm only on page 3, I think, of 14. Yoga is an Eastern religious metaphysics. It is not a guiltless form of relaxing the body and the mind. The goal line of, you know, the, the goal line, get the ball across, is the same as the Hinduism. Which is understand that one is in Brahm. That's not the same as Brahm's lullaby. Brahm, B-R-A-H-M-A-N. The fundamental detached God of the universe in Hinduism. So this Brahm is a falling God that does not worship the God of the Bible. Where God has told us already by the scripture, you're to have no other God. So already I can end in page three and say it's done in 18 minutes. No. Don't do it. But some of you, if you haven't got offended and turned me off, you're going to get, oh, I want more reasoning. I want, I want more stuff to, to please me in my sin. That's not enough. I'll give you more. And you're going to find that this is a sin, yoga. So a lot of you have already turned this off or are going to look at it and say, oh, I'm not going to listen to him. So you can out by your sin. Yoga is promoted in the appearance of an innocent, healthful technique, but it's far from it, H. Riker warns. Quoting, yoga is not a thrilling jest if we consider that a misunderstanding in the practice of yoga can mean death or insanity, end of quote. And that if the breath is, quote, pre prematurely exhausted, there is an immediate danger of the death of the yogi, end of quote, Riker, the Yoga of Light, Los Angeles, Dawn House, 1974, page 135. I'm documenting to you. I am carrying over someone else's brain for this study. Blackouts. 
strange trance states or insanity are listed from even the slightest mistake of practicing yoga. You can mess with your brain as you mess with your brain with drugs and alcohol and smoking, tobacco. Yoga runs in the realm of illegal drugs, tobacco, and alcohol and messing with your brain. Do you think God wants you to do that? Would you not think it to be a sin? Shamai Prabhahada Anada, not try hard in that name, yoga and mysticist list brain injury, incurable disease, and insanity as potential hazards with wrong yoga practice. Oh, please don't shine me up for that. I get entertained when we go to a doctor's office or hospital. We got the television that we have to watch. And hi, this is this is our drug for headaches. And if you ask your doctor for this headache pill, it will have the side effects. It will kill you, give you cancer, give you a bigger headache, make you unable to walk, make your bladder go more, make you have diarrhea, turn your face red, make your hands purple, and just pages and pages and, and minutes and minutes of side effects. Look at the side effects if you do yoga wrong. Blackout, strange trance. You know that real, maybe one of the things that some of these people, not all, that are in this world that have gone, I'm going to use the word crazy, I don't know if it's correct, maybe it's because they dabbled in something that they weren't supposed to. Drugs, alcohol, tobacco, yoga. We're going to find in the realm of this, if you stay tuned, if you continue to listen, and you won't get offended, if you want the truth, we're going to see devils. More and more as we get into this. In the Psychic Forces and Occult Shock, Wilson and Weldon state, quote, Yoga is really pure occultism. As any number of yoga and occult texts prove, R.S. Marsh's Yoga Sutras and Fundamentals of Yoga, J. Brennan Astral Doorways, and H. Calderdoro's Philosophy of Meditation are footnoted. Occult abilities are common for yoga practice, and the numerous dangers of occultisms are evident from many studies. K. Koch, Christian Counseling Occultism, is footnoted. The yoga scholar and Sanskrit authority, Marsha, states, uh, is this a quote? I think this is a quote, there's a mark. In conclusion, it may be said that behind every psychic investigation, behind mysticism, occultism, etc., knowingly or unknowingly, the yoga system is present. Marsha, OP, period, CIT, period. End of quote. Kurt Koch is a various ex has very yeah, in his various excellent books correlates with the occult, with subsequent experiences of anxiety and depression, sometimes resulting in suicide. Don't sign me up for that. Now, what does the word yoga mean? What is it? You ready for this one? The god of yoga is called Ishvara. I-S-H-V-A-R-A. -A, and is characterized by um... O.M., in quotes, Yoga Sutras 1, period 25. The God of Ishtavar is the source of all knowledge. Now, do you think a Christian has anything to do with this mess? There's a small G-O-D-S. 127, 1.27 in the Sutras. This god, Urshava, is characterized by the symbol and sound of um, um, um. Did you know when you do that, you are Urshava? Did you know that? Did we not read over here that we're not to mention the name? Let's see if I can find that. Uh. Exodus 23, 13, In all things that I say unto you, be circumcised, and make no mention of the name of other gods. 
Um, I'm a Christian, um, other God. I'm a Christian, um, other God. Violation of scriptures. How's that? Many teachers broadcast that um is either a sound without meaning. It means the name of that God. Stop giving this horse cocky. Simply energetic vibrations soothing the body. Oh, I think I gotta go to the bathroom, but someone's in there. Um. Or that is whatever God is to the individual. So um could be any God you want. You can make God Jesus. Um. And Paul says there's another spirit we're, we're talking about, and there's another Jesus. Here it is. You can make um your Christian God and violate the scriptures. Um is very plainly characterizes the pagan god Urshava. Exodus 23, 13. Stolly, stop quoting scriptures. In all things that I have said unto you, be circumspect, and make no mentions of the name of other God, um, neither let it be heard in thy mouth. Joshua 23, 7. That you come not among these nations, that there remain among you, neither make mention of the name of their gods, um. God doesn't even want you to mention their name. As a Christian, have you, um, Yoga is an ancient trail to spiritual growth. I thought the Bible, service to Jesus Christ. So yoga is an addition to the Bible and proper Christian living. Chapter and verse where it says that in the Bible about yoga. You make me wonder why Star Wars calls him yoga. You know, yoga. You know, they're in the mystical forces and sit cross-legged and, oh, I can lift things up with my mind. Star Wars is in the realm of yoga. Yoga is an ancient trail to spiritual growth. It makes out of India where Hindu, Hinduism is trained. The practice of goal of yoga dates back to yup, Shad's U-P-A-N-I-S-H-A-D-S written between 1,000 to 5,000 BC. The yoga scholar will express you that in instruction to practice yoga in the fullest, one must experience what is called a kug kugligai, result with meditation. What does this mean? That's a good question. Thank you for asking. I'm glad you're sticking with me so far. For spiritual instruction to be seized by the soul within the person, the kakran, C-H-A-K-R-A, -A, or different positions which the body were a circle of metaphysics and or biophysical energy exists, joined together in the progress. I just read my Bible and try to do what God tells me to do and pray and seek God's approval of my life and confess my sins. Kanadai, Kunadai, arouses the Contra Center to open and release the energy detained within. I do that with a soda can when I pop the lid. If not done correctly, some believe that it can that a person can injure their brain. Christian involved in this mess? There are these stances that you do that are offered to be 330 million Hindu gods. Yoga posts, the, 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 the postures of yoga really are, they are offerings to the gods. So all those poses, all those, those, those things that you do in the movements of yoga is to the 330 million Hindu god. You are trying to put, listen, I bring my body under sacrifice to God that is to be holy and righteous, that God will see me as a clean vessel that he can use me. Nowhere cross-legged or anything and trying to get in myself. I mean, if I try to get in myself, I might 
invert myself and never get myself inverted back. Oh, I think they do have a, a superhero where he's inverted inside out. Gotta watch out for those movie and television programs. Christians, do you know there are many, many children's cartoons and programs just for yoga? Better pay attention. Uh, okay, where was that? The, these are stances that are off. Okay, I already read that. If you do, if you do these postures, and you do this breathing method, and this meditation, then you will be accepted by a God, small g. So when you do the yoga, like you're supposed, like you're supposed to, you are pleasing God, small g o d s. Do you think God approves of that? Praise moves, an organization, certified personal trainers visit India for three months on a mission trip and would often see people in the streets doing yoga poses in front of the statues of the gods, small g-o-d-s. This is just page five. In yoga, they do what they call prayama. P-A-N-A-Y-A-M-A. -A -A -A. And it's breathing. Prana, P-R-A-N-A, -A, is the Hebrew word for life force. May the force be with you, Yoda. Interesting. The same notion as the word chai in some martial arts. Don't get me into martial arts. I may do that. Well, I got others to do before I, that. Yoga breathing efforts to operate that life energy, which some believe is dangerous. Ephesians 2 2. Where in times past you walked according to the course of this world, what we're doing, what this thing is, according to the prince of the power of the air, Satan, the devil. Devils, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, that is not the spirit of God, my friend. The life force of breathing. Pneuma. Pneumatic. Air wrench. Putting air in your tires. The third area of alarm of yoga is thought of emptying the mind. I can have fun with that expression, but I won't. Which is opposed to what the Bible says. Romans 12, 2, And be not conformed to this world. Yoga is this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, not emptying the mind, that ye may prove that is good, acceptable, perfect, the will of God. And how do you do that? By reading and studying the word of God. Am I able to do this? What does the Bible say? Ephesians 4, 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. There's a renewing, not an emptying. God doesn't want a hollow head. Some people, I think, if it wasn't you know, for the, the, the skull bone, your brain would go, and you're sucking your ear to your ear. History of yoga is based in the Indian, Indus Valley's civilization. The techniques are practiced by the Undas to pledge spiritual growth. The yogis boost unification with the fixed Gaba, Gaba, J I V A, transitory cell, and with the infinite Brahma, the internal cell. You're, you're, getting, you're trying to get with your inside and your outside, and your skin gets in the way. Brahm is a term used by Hindus to mean God. Now we've already looked at that. So what are the what theology? What are you wedding yourself with? What are you marrying yourself to? As a Christian, I'm going to get involved in yoga. You are marrying yourself to Satan and God's. You are committing adultery against God by partaking of these gods. 
Yoga is typically reflect of a God as an impersonal spiritual substance coexisting with all reality. Well, my God ain't impersonal. My God so loved me, he gave his only begotten son that I have believed on him and I am saved. I am a child of God. I have given fruitful and, and glorious uh, eternal life by Jesus Christ, our Lord. This doctrine is called pantheism, which is the view that everything is God. In the Bible, God reveals himself as a personal creator of the universe. God is not my toaster. God is not the tree, though he's the creator of the tree. Look at the mess you're getting into. Meanwhile, it is educated by the yogis, yogis, Y-O-G-I-S, that everything is God. Really? It then stands to motivate man as a God. Look at what the devil said to Adam and Eve. You shall be as gods. Jesus said, you're gods. And without Jesus Christ, you're going to be a fallen god into the lake of fire that burns forever with all the gods. That right there, what I just read is Genesis 3. The serpent. We'll get into the serpent. I hope you're not offended to turn me off yet. I hope you're, wow, this is great. I want to learn more. I may drop my yoga class. Uh... Where about that? Well, let me read. Meanwhile, it's educated by the yogis that everything is a God, and then it stands to motivate man is God. Christianity, on the other hand, imparts that there is a clear division between man and God. Then God is the creator. And one of his creations, man, that he created, is the image of God, Adam. Distinct Distinct of the yogis, the Bible presents man's chief problem to be sin. A disaster uh, to adapt to God's characteristic concern. God said, be holy for I am holy. And guess what? All have sinned come short of glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. I can't be God. I'm not holy. I'm a sinner. Saved by grace. The resolution is Jesus' death on the cross. He calls men to freely receive all the salvation through the faith in Christ Jesus alone. Yoga opinions men's problems mostly in the terms of inexperience. In the Bible, it is sin. In yoga, it's inexperience. There are plenty of people practicing sin out there, and they got plenty of experience. And sometimes they'll give you a piece of paper. A certificate, a diploma, a degree. And they will give some people titles. Man simply does not understand he's a God. So the key is enlightenment or the experience of unification with God. I thought you were God. How can you be a unification of God when you are a God, but you don't know you're God, so you have no unification of God, but you're a God? I think they already blew their mind. In order to grasp the goal, they are essential by a lot of striving and effort which is not redeemed in the Bible way. So they're going by works. And the Bible says we are saved by grace and not, and not of works, least any man boasts. All right, now we're getting some other things. Um, One approach to a deeper communion or practice is through chanting, repeated mantras. Sutras 1.28 and 29. One is instructed to repeat mantra practice, this OM, to deepen their practice. The exercise is deepened because the reoccurrence of the name, remember that name, OM, is a God. Request invokes the linked spirit of Om. You call upon Om, and Om will come. Now, Om is a lot better than Baal. Because when the, the 400 prophets of Baal cried out to Baal before Elijah, Baal didn't answer. But Om will. 
And the God that answered was the God that sent fire down and licked up the water and licked up the dust in the train and, and devoured the offering that Elijah gave. That is God. That is Jehovah. Om denotes a pagan God and is chanted in a request that it requests its energy from the God and to consult to aid in reaching new heights of death, new stages of esoteric practices, powers, and knowledge. Genesis 3. The tree of the good, uh, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You should be like gods. The identical is true for all tones, words, and phrases chanted frequently within meditative and yoga practice. One does not have to understand what he or she is doing in order to appeal to connected spiritual powers. Fundamentally, mantra. Duplication, saying over and over, summons a devilish spirit to enter the consultant and support them in a successful new truths and understanding. And you may get your brain fried. You may come not out of the stand. You may get a brain death. Or make you have suicide. Medication is doing that stuff too today. You know how many Indian doctors, Hindu doctors, are in the practice of medication today? You'll be surprised. Often the consultant is led to believe that he is undergoing an actual fact because of esoteric spiritual practices, distinct visions or gifts or powers. Often escorted by sensations of peace, love, and jubilation. These are all results of a devilish man management. The fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. This is not the fruit of the Holy Spirit. This is the fruits of satanic, devilish. Match them with the people in the Bible who had the uh, unclean spirits. Do you believe someone can be possessed with the devil? Oh, yeah. Santras 2.46-55 Working the activities of yoga corresponding with breathing techniques and meditation is also said to deepen the exercise. You know, I'm reminded of Lamaze when I was reviewing this study about the third or fourth time. And when you do Lamaze, you're trying to focus with your body, with, with, with the baby that's in your belly, that's life, and breathe, breathe, breathe. I got to call Lamaze in question by what I've been reading by these things. What do you do? God said it should be sorrow and pain in childbirth. He didn't tell Eve, breathe. Contact with your inner self, which is your baby. Now, I'm not qualified enough, and I don't have enough uh, education. I do not have enough experience, knowledge, wisdom, understanding to say Lamaz is wrong, but we've seen a lot of breathing. The movement of yoga calls energies by forfeiting homage to the spirit linked with the movement in the same way chanting invokes the devilish spirit by summoning by sound. Again, that sound was um. Now, for example, the sun greeting, which we'll look at in a little bit, the sun greeting pays homage to the sun god. We'll get to that almost closest thing. The sun god, the sun greeting, in yoga, you give honor to the sun. Helos, Greek. Apollo, Greek and Roman. Ra, Egyptian. Sura, Hindu. Surara, Hindu. You have the worship of the sun as much as you have the worship of the sun and the halos and the sun rays in the Catholic Church. How people love that sun. 
They'll lay out in front of that sun at the beach, half naked, some bleaches, all naked. And they'll turn over to get the other side. There's a very factual spirit related with this item. The very real spirit is not on the side of the Lord. It is devilish. Many yogetic yoga poses represent deities and energies connected with animals, planetary bodies, etc. And God told them, do not worship the sun, the moon, the stars, and the Baal, the asterisk, and the Baals. And you find that here right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop right here. We got 45 minutes, and we're going to pick up again in part two of this study. Please go to part two. Get it all. Don't get half half the information. Listen, if you get a cake mix, and you only put half the ingredients in that cake mix, you're not going to get a cake. You're going to get a mess. So this is part one. We're going to do part two once I save it.